past. We may think that we're moving forward as one nation. I don't think that we ever really will. 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 What's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody? The news of my untimely demise has been greatly exaggerated. Because here I am, your boy, bless the damn best. I took a long hiatus, you know what I mean, from making videos. But I've been in the deep, dark corners of Twitter spaces. That's where I've been a lot. Doing very little talking, a lot of listening, and I've learned a few things, and I've confirmed some things that I already knew in my heart to be true anyway, you know what I mean? Heard a lot of disturbing things. We'll discuss that at some point. But, as of right, like I was saying, as of right now, today, what we got going on is, take a familiar walk with me, right? All very good friend, Dane Clickbait Callaway dropped a new video yesterday entitled Reparations Cases Are Being Ignored for Political Jargon. Now, just like most things that this guy says, it's always vague and confusing. But I feel like if we put our heads together, we can get to the bottom of this shit right now. So, okay, the video opened up with two people on the newscast debating reparations, you know. Got this one nerd type guy, probably Dane Calloway type guy. He's, he's making the counter argument for reparations saying that it makes no sense. Who's supposed to pay? It's been too long. Nobody's still alive that was alive then. The same old coon talking point trying to soften, I guess, soften the blow for white supremacy, right? Okay. Since the last time I made a video, Dane Calloway still been making stupid videos. But nothing, nothing relevant enough for me to um, discuss on my platform. But this time, for the very first time, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't really do the, I don't really do the agent talk, right? Because even though I know that it's true and I know that they exist, I have a very hard time wrapping my mind around that type of individual, like uh, somebody who would work against his own people to his own demise. At the end of the day, right? So I don't, you know what I mean? I, I don't just throw around, you know what I mean? Oh, no, he an agent. He an agent, you know, because I disagree with somebody. I don't, I don't ever do that. That's just like, you know, that snitch jacket. That's, that's a jacket that you don't need to wear about something that's not true. Okay? But this particular video, these arguments that, that, that he's making, these arguments against reparation that Danes Callaway is making, these arguments against reparations that Dane Calloway appears to be making in this video is agent provocateur type shit. I see, like I mentioned earlier, right? I've been on Twitter spaces a lot, right? And uh, FBA, security tribe, I mean, they out there mashing. They out there mashing, they out there mashing, they out there... They out there calling out everything foul. I mean, I mean, I just sit back in the um secure the tribe spaces. I just go, I just go and get in the corner and just listen, right? Because one thing I can say about those um young brothers and sisters, the un the uncompromising part, oh, they understood the mission on that um uncompromising part and, and the gatekeeping part. I can dig it, I can dig it. Now I can't really take two, three hours of that shit, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm in and out, you know what I mean? Maybe it's the generation gap or whatever, but you know, they, they, they tend to get in a lot of, they get in a lot of arguments now. now 
productive arguments most of the time, but sometimes they they devolve into um, something other than that because it's a it's a lot of females and 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 the females in the space gonna make you feel gonna make you feel that female energy and sometimes it get a little catty but so much for that all right we're gonna get into this dang callaway video and try to see i'm gonna try to see if i can clarify some of this non-concise mumbo jumbo that he about to bring to the people let's go i know y'all miss me We're entering the age of AI. We're going to have self-driving cars and trucks in five to 10 years. 30% of malls are going to close in the next four years, thanks to Amazon. Two and a half million call center workers in the US are going to get replaced by AI. There was a study in The Guardian that said the, the median African-American household net worth is going to be zero by 2053, like in 34 years. You guys see that study? No. Well, yeah, you should look it up. And so why are they forecasting that African-American net worth is going to go to zero? It's because of this economic tidal wave that is coming. This economic tidal wave is going to and the best thing we can do about that as individuals and as families that would help the whole out and to keep bullshit like that from happening is make sure you are responsible with your money and make sure you grow your wealth and make sure you try to try to practice um group e economics as best you can but let's keep pushing wipe out many working class jobs. Uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be the equivalent of a natural disaster. And we know what happens in a natural disaster. Who suffers? Poor people don't have the resources, people of color. I noticed that um ops, right? The ops to the black on code people of this nation or any nation that wants to see the system of white supremacy replaced with a system of justice. One thing that they love to do is to take Martin Luther King, foundational black American giant, and Malcolm X, foundational black American titan, and, and take their words out of context to, to men or to mail with they sick ass fucking personal agendas. And um, I'm saying that to say this, the reason why Reverend Click Bay Calloway pulled that particular clip was because it was Malcolm X using the word Aboriginal. But he was talking about black people being, all, all, all Aborigines were dog people. Yes, the original, the original Aboriginal land is Africa. And another thing about that word, right? Okay, this is a, this is, a, I'm, a, I'm about, check this out, y'all. For the first time, I'm about to see, I'm gonna try to execute a Dane Calloway technique, right? Okay, in this same situation with, with the word Aboriginal, right? You go in the dictionary, Google it or whatever. The first definition that comes up is gonna say original inhabited inhabitants of a land before any colonization, right? But you can go, okay, the word Aboriginal, Ab Original, right? We know what we know what original means. It means it means real, it means first, right? The word ab, the prefix ab means not or to move away from. See what I did right there? I peeked all the way down through the word, right? found something that fits my own personal sick narrative which is to discredit another man my dang Callaway trick for the day but we gonna keep it pushing because he is the master of tricks let's go <laughs> Right now, pause this video and Google AB, the word AB, and tell me what you find. 
Tell me if you find what Malcolm X said or something else. But so much for that. That's just a little side note. Keep it pushing. Just to be petty, because that's what you do with, with 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 clowns and shit. You just you just be petty and just play the game along with them and just fuck with them, right? Okay. On Dane Callaway video, when his logo come in, right? With the music, with the, the Indian flute music. I don't know if that's fucking, I don't know what the fuck Indian music sounds like, but I guess that's what that's supposed to be, right? So he got an eagle at the top of the damn um, of the logo. And then notice the sound, a bird sound comes in. If you know anything about birds, that ain't no goddamn eagle. That's a fucking hawk, dumbass. So I'm just gonna play that part again, just for the hell of it. I'm not playing that horrible ass rap song though, but check out this fucking hawk. That, see, he, disguise, he loves disguise shit. This guy's an Indian. That's a black man. That fucking hawk. No, no. Shut the fuck up. Well, today's society of America, people are suffering from a variety of distractions that are placed in the forefront of the public's eye in order to maintain a particular degree of division amongst themselves. And when it comes to the history of slavery in America, some may feel as though slavery was abolished in 1865, when it was merely upgraded and transitioned into what it is known today as, which is employment. No, nigga. Slavery is not no goddamn employment. Okay. What is work with no pay, nigga? Is that employment? Fucking fat ass, stupid ass nigga. The industrialized version of what President Woodrow Wilson and his administration, along with multiple other co-conspirators like Henry Ford, J.P. Morgan, Andrew Carnegie, John D. Rockefeller, and the University of Chicago, just to name a few, created and enacted into law for the benefit of 1% of the people. And their social engineering experiment also included control over things that would affect one's minds. Okay, right here is where I peeped the narrative. I peeped where he, where he was trying to go with it. I didn't really... I didn't really understand why until I got later in the video. Notice, right, at the beginning, he named off all these different, you know, business tycoons and companies, and he's saying that they got laws enacted to move slavery from the private citizen or the private owner to the government and corporations. Okay, already it's going in the wrong direction because that, that is an argument against the government being the entity, the entity that owes us reparations for slavery. He's saying, he's saying that we should be going after these companies and not the government. Man, that is real, real agent-like to try and, and catch a movement that's basically still in the infant stage, but lately has shown a lot of progress and derail that. That's agent shit, Dane. That's agent shit. But we go on, let's keep on with your police talk. Controlling what is known as American history, religion, science, social media, and public education. In 1909, in front of a large set group of law advisors and educators, President Woodrow Wilson was quoted stating the following, we want one class of persons to have a liberal education, and we want another class of persons, a very much larger class of necessity in every society, to forego the privileges of a liberal education and fit themselves to perform specific difficult manual tasks. In quote, in other words, compulsory educational institutions, which does not exclude colleges and universities, were handed down particular curriculums that taught its students how to become industrial providers that will benefit already existing companies of the open market throughout America's capitalist society, while the other class will be provided See. have a liberal education and we want another class of persons a very much larger class of necessity in every society to forego the privileges of a liberal education and fit themselves to perform specific difficult manual tasks in quote see here we go again 
with the Callaway tricks, right? He takes something that's basic and basic common knowledge. Although it may be a little nefarious, I might say, it's not that complicated. Okay, the statement that the president made, yes, yes, in society, some people go to higher education and they get jobs that take more training than people that don't have this education. Both classes are necessary. One class is owners, managers, the other class is workers. But it's up to you. It's up to you. It's not slavery. He's equating that to slavery. That is employment. Before, in the earlier times, straight chattel slavery, bro. In other words, compulsory educational institutions, which does not exclude colleges and universities, were handed down particular curriculums that taught its students how to become industrial providers that will benefit already existing companies of the open market throughout America's capitalist society. While the other duh, duh, the class will be provided a much higher quality education to say the least, allowing its students to think freely and become innovative in having control. You see what he did right there? He interjected his own narrative building sentence into what the president said. He ain't say nothing about no free thinkers. Just because somebody goes to college, that's not where all the free thinkers come from, Dane Calloway. That was lazy and clumsy as hell. Exactly what I expect from somebody built like you. Making excellence inclusive rather than inclusive will require revolutionary change, not just in our practices, but also in our mindsets. Dr. Carl Snyder. Now, since you have been made cognizant of how it He loved quoting some old German ass, Latin ass cracker, man. Liberal cracker. education was designed for only 1% of the people. That should make you question everything that you were ever taught in school, even if you earned a doctrine or any form of degree for that matter. Because it's not about you being taught the best education possible when you were being taught lies as your education to begin with. It's now beyond black and white issues. It's what's wrong in white issues. For example, hey man, maybe I'm just slow, but I totally don't get what he just said. Maybe he can clean it up. Over the years, the descendants of the indigenous Aboriginal Niji of Turtle Island, or rather the people that are falsely misclassified as African Americans today, are owed a lot more than just a form of reparations. And those who feel as though they should be paid for their direct ancestors' involvement will argument against cash reparations. Argument against cut the goddamn check coming right up in this ancient ass video. That is fat ass nigga, man. The creation and industrialization of the United States of America should be paid. However, just a simple check or lump sum of money given by those who benefited from our ancestors' labor to make amends for the now over 240 years of hereditary damage this capitalist society indulged upon our ancestors does not, in fact, resolve the overall issue. And here's why. Let's take the definition of reparations, for example, the one which is heavily highlighted to the... Oh, my God. Here we go. With the fucking definitions, man. I told y'all, man, this nigga do this shit for real. Check it out. Check it out. Hey. He, he kicked my ass in this. I, I, I can't fuck with him. Public stating that reparations is an act of making amends or giving satisfaction for wrongdoing, maybe in the form of payment for damages. But let's look at another definition oh, of reparations. Oh, here we which go. Is an act of repairing <laughs> or keeping in repair. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Sort of like when you take it. A distinction without a difference from. The king of fucking semantics. Like I've been calling this motherfucker since my first since my very first video discussing this guy, man. Car to a mechanic who has plans to fix the initial problem with your car with somehow more damage is done, so that at a later time you are sure to return to continuously allow that same bad mechanic to work on your car unknowingly. Or I'll give you another example. It's like when you visit your doctor. Yeah, you need to give another example, because that example was absolutely stupid, man. And he or she prescribes you a pill that allegedly cures one problem, but yet it's a, a what? A pill? A pill? What, what you? Hey, speaking of appeals, how is that um defamation and um photo theft case going? Somehow exposes you to several more. This is the problem with reparations. It does not fix the problem. It just covers it up for a certain time period, and yet the problem still persists. Because in order to fix a problem, we must begin at the root of a problem. This is why it is critically important for our people to know the truth about our past in order to see exactly where the problem began. 
In my previous documentary called The Untold Truth About Reparations, ADOS, and Slavery in America, I shared detailed information about the Civil War, why and how it was a labor dispute, and I also mentioned that Abraham Lincoln did not. Hey man, at this point, everybody that, that moves in these circles, in these black empowerment circles, already know this basic ass information that he's force feeding to his fellow TP dwellers. Free so-called African-American slaves with the release of the American. Everybody else in black empowerment besides the TP dwellers. Emancipation Proclamation, or Proclamation 95. But what President Lincoln's Proclamation 95 did do, however, was ended the Civil War by quelling the advancement of military troops upon any people or person who did not agree with the United States government. And no shit. Instead of fighting, it was urged by politicians for people to bring their disputes to Congress, but only through a representative of each state. This is how the United States was established, having learned how to govern the 13 colonies by watching the operations of the previous confederacies our ancestors owned. I will go into more detail about this later on in another segment, but what is... Now, recently, I've discovered a few things that um, point in the direction of something that he just pointed out, that the representative style government was copied before it was the United States of America. I'm going to look into who later. Haven't had a chance to do that yet, but that was an interesting point. Just like I always say, he mixes lies with the truth and hopes like hell that you're not intelligent enough or, or spirit-led enough, kind of like me, to decipher the bullshit from the real shit. But we're going to keep pushing. Important to note here is that in order to restore the union upon the remaining confederacies that would eventually turn into governments of each state, a set of reparations had to be agreed upon in favor of the copper-colored landowners, sharecroppers, or the Negro farmers, making this one of the main possible reasons why Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in 1865. Now, reparations could have been delayed for the people of color due to a few factors. One, a study has never been conducted by any credible source in order to discover just how much... Okay. Here we go again with this agent shit, right? He knows that we don't fuck with HR 40. Fuck a goddamn study and some more meetings for motherfuckers coming there and goddamn babble. You know what I mean? What I guess the point, the only point that makes sense that he's trying to make now is that we need we need we need to do a study before we start talking about reparation agent talk because they already got a stupid ass study that's been out there forever. With no movement. In a form of payment to the employees. Which is what agents want. No movement. Between 1776 and now, be compensated for their binding contracts of forced labor. Two, there were subdivisions doing business as institutions, agencies, banks, and corporations that history fails to mention who worked as liaisons. We already know about Henry Ford and all the motherfuckers. I come back to him. He's making an argument that not the government but businesses and corporations are oh reparations also first thing first what we do know is that it was sanctioned by this government maybe maybe that's a second wave of reparations maybe that's what we can do with the capital that we get of the cash reparations bitch because that's what the fuck we gonna do so you need to get your little fat pudgy ass out of the way with all these agent ass arguments bro of the U.S. government, directly involving themselves with funding both sides of the 61 documented wars of the 1800s by creating loopholes and other schemes that forced our ancestors out of their own lands here in America, and also with streamlining the industrialized version of slavery that still exists today. Three, these companies were never... The employment situation that exists today. Now, that was a, that was a proper spot to use the correct term. One of, one of Dane Calloway and his followers' favorite words is misnomer. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, saying that we black, that's a misnomer. That's a misnomer. Well, Dane Calloway, that description that you just gave for motherfuckers having jobs is a goddamn misnomer. They're held responsible for their actions in a courtroom, which makes it even more reason to reveal who should be held responsible, still, in order to bridge the gap between still. justice and equality for the indigenous aboriginal Niji right now. 
The majority of bonds that were paid off by employers in order to hire prisoners of war as their new employees were done so by either bartering or loaning contracts out to employers as a form of business credit. This method remains intact still today. A bond is a quote, promise to repay the principal along with interest on a specific date. Some bonds do not pay interest, but all bonds require a repayment of principal. When an investor buys a bond, he or she becomes a creditor of the issuer, end quote. So since the so-called slave master, or rather the employer, becomes the creditor, and the so-called slave holder, or rather the issuer of the bond, is the investor, then both parties are not only responsible for funding slavery. Plebiscite babble. Time wasting. Blah, 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 blah. But should be held responsible for refunding the so-called slaves. Keep in mind that our ancestors were under the impression that they were not working for free and that this form of slavery or blind capitalism will benefit everyone, especially those who were the majority. And, and, and at certain times, he would just make up some shit out of whole cloth. He would just make up some shit. Like what he said then. He said our ancestors didn't think they were working for nothing. So... All ancestors in chain and enslaved thought that one day they would get paid. Where is the evidence of that, Turtle Tribe? Y'all like looking up shit. Put, put some evidence of that shit in the comment section. He just made that shit up. Pulled it straight up out of his fat. Of the help that literally built America from the ground up due to promises or contracts that were never upheld by the promising parties. Hence the term. Look, slaves. What we doing here on this here plantation is we are building America. So get your ass out there and pick that goddamn cotton and one day all of this will be yours. Whoever your ancestors was, they might have failed for that shit. But nah, man. Nah, man. My, my, my ancestors knew what time it was. And the whole time they was planning, plotting, strategizing, fighting, shanking, Shooting, whatever, to free their goddamn self. I don't know what your ancestors was doing in a paperwork prison. I'm indentured servitude. The noun indenture is a quote, written formal contract for services, a deed. We were never slaves. We were just indentured servants. And they promised us our check. But every Friday, they told us we just got to work a little bit more and then we'll get our check next Friday. And next Friday, Ain't never came. That's his narrative. That's his path to getting reparation. Non-cash, non-cash, vague, never explained what kind of reparations. That's what he gonna get for you. With mutual covenants. So who are these people that should be held responsible for the millions of broken promises, compulsory educational institutions, unpaid laborers, and unpaid military? The motherfucking government, dummy. The government. Soldiers who fought and died for the uprising of this country, destroyed legacies, cultures and spiritualities, inequality in workplaces, generational poverty, stolen land allotments, racism, concentration camps turned project housing reserved for only a large median of people of color, identity theft and paper genocide, and many, many years of injustice and discrimination? The answer to this question is very complex and will require me to produce multiple segments surrounding this topic to break it all down. But there here's a quick- There you go, there you go. Another. Dane Callaway special ops tactic. He builds you up with the music and the, the random quotes in your window and reaches to a crescendo of, oh, that's too complicated. It'll take too long. I'm going to tell you later. Or you need to go look it up yourself. Every video, he does this. When are you motherfuckers going to catch on? He's talking about it's too complex. It'll take him four or five videos. Yet and still, he will sit there and talk to you for 15 minutes about a fucking word, bro. You busted, Callaway. You a fucking charlatan and a sham. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, damn, man. This, this is very, very late in this video. And I know a very small percentage of you even watch these videos this long. But he made, he made a fucking video whining about his numbers. Now he getting shadow banned. He, people can't leave comments on. He about to... He about to Start another service, and, 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 and he's watching for people stealing his content and all that. But see, what it is, is the last few videos that he made before that, 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 that cry fest he made, 
they were pretty reasonable. It was none of this, this Nat Turner wasn't real and, 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 and all these outlandish, provocative statements he was making. He was actually trying to be serious and, and, and explain some shit, right? And that shit was ass. That shit sucked. I'm like, oh my God, man, this is not even, this is not even inspiring me to, to, to pick it apart because it's so terrible. And nobody watched it. He got some low ass numbers. See, what we are witnessing is the start of his ending. Next year at this time, somebody gonna have to go do a welfare check on Mr. Kellaway. Who example to make note of. The majority of our people now can recall hearing stories about how their ancestors and even some living elders were former sharecroppers, landowners, or farmers. And the way Hollywood paints the picture of American Indians should make you question why you would rarely see authentic photographs painted or engraved images of the Hollywood depicted version of American Indians working in the fields anywhere across the southeastern region of North America. So how would millions of American Indians be able to survive if they didn't know how to farm? And for that matter, when did the American Indians have time to set some time aside to teach millions of so-called enslaved American Negroes how to farm? Before these same millions of American Negroes taught the incoming white foreigners from Europe and Africa how to farm? The answer is very simple. The American... The answer is they knew how to farm certain things before they got here, they, the black African slaves that don't exist in your world, man. But anyway... This video has gone on way too long, and I guess I'm rusty now, you know what I mean? I don't have the kind of stamina that I used to have, but this is the first of many new videos. So, like I always sign off, this your boy, Bless the Best, your host, till the next post.